Hey up ladies and fellas, welcome to another video. This is the start of our big 2023 Scottish adventure. Scotland has become a bit of a pilgrimage for us in recent times and we've spent at least a week a year here. This time it was Emma's birthday so rather than camp we booked a bit of luxury and stayed in this amazing remote cottage near the village of Rogat. Although it's located close to the east coast it's just a 90 minute drive to the west so the ideal location for exploring the far north of Scotland. Stay tuned for some cosy nights in, a birthday party, the best of the NC500, locks, mountains, beaches, mind-blowing driving routes, and some of the most beautiful scenery the UK has to offer. Wow, it's warm. Capercaillie Cottage is a 200-year-old building situated within a 300-acre croft. There's a log burner to keep you warm at night, a secluded hot tub overlooking the hillside for miles around, and lots of quirky features. Not least, the three-foot door you have to practically crawl through to get into one of the bedrooms. So this is one bedroom then, is it? Bath. Whoa, this is cool. It's like just a bed. <laughs> There's nothing but a bed. Let's have a look outside here, it's well nice. Look at the kitchen. The second building is a renovated stone barn with a four-poster bed, a fire and a TV. The perfect cosy little bedroom, but for a couple of old farts like us, an outdoor trek to the bathroom, so we left that as we found it. After a 10 hour journey up there, we were both pretty wiped out. We opened up a bottle of wine and settled in for a night in front of the fire, digging into the box of complimentary snacks we were left by the hosts. We woke up to a misty but peaceful morning. I sat with my coffee on the porch listening to the sheep and birds song and it felt like we were the only people around for miles. The forecast was for the sun to burn the mist off mid-morning so we chilled for a couple of hours and then headed to the beach to exercise those cheeky beagles.
Dornoch Beach is a beautiful expanse of golden sand located on the tranquil Dornoch Firth. Miles of golden sand stretch from Dornoch Point heading past Ember Beach to the mouth of the Loch Fleet National Nature Reserve. Further north along the coast are two other award-winning beaches located at Golspit and Brora, which you'll see more of later in the week. In our opinion, Scotland has got some of the best beaches in the world, and our favourite is coming up in this series. Alright, the weather isn't always beach worthy, but the white sands and the turquoise water compete with most beaches in the world, and best of all, there's never anybody on them. Walter, what are you saying? I think he likes them too. After two or three hours wandering along the beach, we had worked up an appetite and headed back to the cottage for a feed. Seeing as it was Emma's birthday this week, we had ordered some Gusto boxes so that we could have some special meals while we were there. If you've not heard of Gusto, it's a bit like HelloFresh where they send you the recipe kits out with all the ingredients that you need. Unfortunately, the box never showed up, so we had to stop and do a food shop on the way up. It was a bit of a shame, really, because we picked some really good stuff that I was looking forward to not only eating, but cooking as well. We also ended up spending about three times as much on food as we would have done with the box. The next day, we headed out early so that we could get a few different walks in. We'd picked three decent looking routes to do in and around the leg area, the first of which being Ord Hill and Ferrycroft Forest. We'd noticed at this point that Boris seemed to have become a bit of a tick magnet. We'd found three of him so far just crawling around on him. None of them had attached, but we made sure to check him after every walk anyway. Once that was all sorted, we hit the road again. After pulling in for a quick lunch stop in a lay-by, we were ready for another walk, and we headed to the Falls of Shin.
Just as we arrived at the viewpoint, we actually managed to see a salmon jumping up the falls. I might be wrong, but I think this is quite rare at this time of year. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to catch it on video, despite standing there for another 20 minutes with the record button pressed. After a while salmon spotting and a little wander around the woodland, we set off for our third and final walk of the day, Raven's Rock Gorge. On the way, we took a detour down some forest roads for a little explore. We found an amazing spot for a wild camp with an incredible view over a valley hidden away from the road. Once we finally arrived at the gorge, we introduced ourselves to the locals, had a wander around another woodland and met some bears. It takes balls to do this walk, that's for sure. It had been quite a long day of walking and driving at this point and we were all ready for a rest. Time to head back to the cottage and fire up that hot tub. After spending a couple of hours pruning in the hot tub, we lit the fire, cooked some burgers, and then settled in for the night, ready for more adventures tomorrow. Join us next time for more of the best Scottish beaches, sunsets, oozing cheese, and the best of the NC500.